Many of our Christian practices are very deeply entrenched with the practices of Babylon. And unknowingly, we are doing things that are giving worship to the Babylonian spirits. Two years ago, the Lord told me this. He said, now the time has come for you to call out my bride to come out of Babylon and stop all the Babylonian practices in the church. One such thing is the celebration of Christmas. The celebration of Christmas, the celebration of Easter. The Lord told me now, tell my people to come out of all that. You know, if you look at our celebration of Christmas, every symbol that we use has no biblical significance. The Christmas tree, the star, the manger, the, the magi who comes. Have you seen all those figurines? You know, by the way, the magi, the wise men coming to the baby Jesus in the manger is unbiblical in the first place. Because by the time the wise men came, the baby Jesus was no more a baby, he was a toddler, at least two to three years old. So that is wrong in the first place. It's not a baby. So he was a toddler. He was only a baby when the wise men came, the shepherds came to visit him. Or when Simeon and Anna saw him, that he was a baby. But not when the wise men came. So that was wrong. All these Babylonian practices. So two years ago, we stopped all these practices in our ministry and in our family. So I told my mother and I told my family, no more Christmas trees. No more of all this putting up of all this because they are Babylonian practices. And the celebration of Easter. The word Easter is, comes from the word Ishtar. You know, do you know that? Ishtar is another name for Ashtaroth. You see how we have been deceived? And God called the people from the beginning to worship him on the Sabbath day. When did this Sunday worship came? It's the Vatican who changed the date. <coughs> that is a documented evidence there. See, we should come out from all that and come back to the true keeping of the commandments of God. The commandments of God and the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. The uncorrupted, pure faith holding on to the Lord Jesus Christ in an intimate, revelational knowledge and experience. If it happened once, it can happen the second time, the third time, the fourth time, and over and over again. Amen. All it needs is to happen once. Once it has happened, we can say, oh, because it has happened once, it can happen again. Even if it doesn't happen once, you will make it happen once. Amen. Speaking forth food to come. If you read Numbers chapter 20 verse 8, God told Moses, people were complaining for water. No water anywhere. So he said, look, do you see the rock there? Tomorrow morning, gather all the people before the rock and you look at the rock and you said, water, come out. That's all. That's all Moses should do. If he had done that, a huge reservoir of water, enough to feed three million people, would have come out of the rock. A river of water would have flowed and flowed and flowed from a small rock. You know, science tells us there are some water in rocks, but there are little tricks, tricklets. 
little drop here, little drop there. Natural water inside a rock will not flow abundantly to feed 3 million people. For that to happen, it is supernatural. The Bible says, you know, their water and their bread will be provided them in the last days. And you will do this. You will command water to come out. You will command water to be turned, poisoned water. Water is poisoned by the enemy, by chemical gases, by chemical waste. All the waters are polluted. How are you going to drink the water? You will touch the water. And you will command the waters to turn into sweet drinking water like what Elisha did, like what Moses did. The waters of Mara changed. You see, the entire molecular structure of the waters were changed. A polluted water, molecules are different. So for the molecules of the water to be changed, to be drinking, means there is an entire chemical change that takes place in the water. That is creative, recreative miracles. Healings and recreative miracles to join limbs and raise the dead, those injured by the Antichrist army. You know, in a war, there are casualties on both sides, right? There's going to be casualties on both sides. So when the limbs are broken, the limbs are cut, you know, what are you going to do? You get your hands cut off and it's just dangling by one vein. You say, not a problem, come here. Just take it, Poop. fine, go back. Go on doing your normal work. Does it sound comical? It's the truth. It's the truth. You know, even bullets cannot kill you. I once saw a vision. In this vision, I was leading a group of youths to war against the enemy. So all this bunch of youths, when I look at them, they appeared in their early 20s, not, not mid-20s. So I was like the captain leading them, you know, and we were in what looked like an old-fashioned English castle. You know, in the old-fashioned English castles, they have a drawbridge that you have to cross over. So we were on one end of the bridge uh, to go over to the other side. And as I was leading the group, then came the enemy. And they all looked so huge and big size like Goliaths. And they all had all kinds of modern weapons, machine guns, grenades, this and that. And what does, what does my team have? Swords. You know, by the time you swing a sword like that, a hundred bullets will fly. Right? Bullets are faster than swords. Isn't it? So, and the enemy's group looks so fierce and threatening. And so intimidating. So when I, when I came and stood there, we were about 30 feet away. And I thought for a moment, my God, we are outnumbered. My group was very small. And that group was so huge. We are outnumbered by numbers. Not only that, even by weapons, we are outnumbered. What shall I do now? I was thinking, you know. I was fighting with my emotions. When I looked back, all these youths, hey, youths are always very bold, you know, because they are youths, right? The older folks, we will tend to take a little slow, right? We want to be calculative. <laughs> Come on, tell me the truth, right? But the youths are not like that, no, they are daring. They are very adventurous. They are very bold. They are just waiting at the starting block for the shooting gun. They immediately run. But not the old ones. They will calculate, okay, how fast to run, how slow to run. <laughs> so here I was very calculative. And I look at the youths and they were ready. They were looking at me. Captain, give the command. We will go charging. 
I say, yeah, we will go charging. We'll all go to our death. <laughs> so here I was thinking, what shall I do now? What shall I do now? And I, each time I look back, they say, Captain, give the word. Give the word. We'll go charging. We can take them down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, and the enemy was challenging, come on, come, come. So, so finally I, I thought, okay, if die, let's die valiantly. So I said, team, ready? Yes, captain, ready anytime. So I said, let's go charge. The moment I said charge, a hundred bullets came and hit me hit all over me and I dropped down dead. Wait, wait, the story's not ended yet. <laughs> it's not the end yet. So I dropped dead. And I was looking down, just in this position, you know. And uh, my team, they lost all hope. Oh, captain down. White House down. What shall we do now? Captain down. So I was like, just in a frozen kind of a dead position. And then, after some time, I felt like an anointing came upon me. And I opened my eyes. And I stood up. I looked at my body. Pierced all the ten, about ten bullets sticking. So I took the bullet out. When I took all the bullets out, there were blood smear everywhere, you know. But nothing was wrong. Just took out all the bullets and dropped them one by one. And when the enemy saw this, they were shivering. If bullets cannot kill this group, what else can? And then he said, come on, let's charge! <laughs> That is what these powers, these horns will do for you. Amen. Amen. No harm will come. We supernaturally protected until the time comes. If perhaps for you to lay down your life as a martyr. But till then, no weapons that are formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Seven years ago, I saw a vision one day. In this vision, a prophet friend of mine and I, we were walking down what looked like a school building. So we were walking down the corridor. And as we were walking down the corridor, I glanced to my right, all the classrooms, they were all empty. So I was wondering what happened to all the students. Every classroom was empty. So we walked and we walked and we walked. And we came to one particular classroom towards the end of the corridor. And there were no students either except for three teachers. They were standing by the board with the right staffs. Two males and one female. And the one male was taller than the other and I noticed this man that his right hand and his right leg was twisted and bent perhaps due to polio attack but he was a teacher and he was just explaining to them and I, I, we just stood there at the entrance of the classroom and looked at them and in, at first the teachers did not notice us then the teacher just turned and looked at me. As soon as he did that, he was instantly healed. I was shocked. I was surprised. I told my prophet friend, look, that man was healed just by looking at us. 
I did not pray for him. I did not even speak a word, be healed, nothing. I just stood there and he just looked and he was healed. So this prophet friend said, come, let's go yonder to the football field. There, the students are all gathered there. So when we went to the football field and these three teachers came along with us, the entire student body was gathered in the field. And when the teacher who was paralytic came, and the entire student body saw him, they were shocked because they all know this man was born with a twisted right arm and a twisted right leg. And now his hand is completely whole, his right leg was completely whole, and they were all wondering what happened. And the teacher then told the entire student body what God's power did. And after he had testified, I shared the gospel to them. And every one of the student body accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. This is what the powers of the age to come is going to do. Amen. Amen. Horn number six. Power to empower God's army with supernatural abilities. When this anointing comes, it will equip the army of God. Not just with one particular anointing, which other horns do, but this anointing will give you the ability with supernatural abilities. What are the supernatural abilities? Among many, some of which are, one, it will give you supernatural speed. Like Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 45 to 46. You know, a horse runs at its maximum best. 60 miles per hour. That's the power of the horse speed. So, now let's do a little math. One horse runs at 60 miles per hour. And then you have several hundreds of pounds of a chariot weight. So the drag is there. And if a horse, two horses pulling a chariot, its speed will be reduced. Right? So let's say to 40 miles per hour. So that is still faster than any human. The fastest human can run at the fastest speed, 20 miles per hour. So even the fastest man running beside a chariot pulled by horses cannot run faster than horses pulling a chariot because the horse will be running at 40 miles per hour and you are running at 20 miles per hour. Now keep this math in mind. And here comes Elijah. Starting block. And the empire says, ready? Get set. Go. So Elijah told Ahab, Ahab, I'll give you a head start. Because you don't have an umbrella. You don't have a raincoat because it's going to rain. So you have a head start. You go first. You better reach home earlier before the rain drenches you. So Ahab was so thankful to Elijah for giving me a head start as she was riding fast and then comes bionic man. <laughs> comes Elijah, zoom! Like a speeding bullet, like a flying bird. Who is it? Elijah. <laughs> what did you thought? Superman? Now, let's go back to the math. Here we have this horse pulling a chariot, running at 40 miles per hour for Elijah to run faster than the horse. He must have run at least above 60 miles per hour, which is humanly impossible. So he did that because of the supernatural power that comes upon. Do you like to know how this thing works? I'm very, very inquisitive, you know. 
whenever I'm taught like this, my first question will always be, but how does it work? Okay, he, he's going to run fast. But how does it work? Is it that there are wings on the legs? How is it possible? You know, there are two kinds. One, there will be small wings attached to your ankles. Well, scout's honor. I have seen them. Little wings about this size attached to your ankles on both sides of the ankles, on the right leg and the left leg. And when you run, those wings are flying. And when they flap their wings, you are not running. You are gliding through like a hovercraft. Your feet hardly touches the ground. You're just gliding through. That's one. Secondly, in April of 2014, I was fasting and praying for seven days in Jerusalem. Now, I'm going to open my heart and share with you the things of the spirit, the hidden riches of the secret places. And I believe all of you believe. And it, I don't care anymore if people don't believe. Because there will always be some who will not believe. I was debating over this issue for a long time, you know. I mean, yesterday, a saint appeared to me and he said, don't be bothered about those who don't believe. You must teach this to make the people know the reality of such things so that when it happens to you, you will know it's not demonic and you will know you're not imagining and you will know it is real from God. Amen. Amen. So, during those seven days of fast, one day, I had a visitation from the prophet Jeremiah. And he was speaking to me about uh, some things that I cannot remember right now. I was trying to look at my notes where that incident was. I just couldn't find it. But while he was speaking, a beautiful, full-size white horse appeared into the room. And he just stood behind Jeremiah. And every now and then I would glance at the white horse. It was so beautiful to look at, you know, a full-size horse. And uh, then I asked Jeremiah, what is that horse doing? And he said, that is your horse. I said, that's my horse. For what? For what? He expected me to know everything, you know. <laughs> what do you mean for what? I said, I said, Father, I don't know. Please teach me. He said, that is your horse for your transportation. I said, transportation? How? <laughs> then he told me, haven't you read in the Bible how Elijah ran faster than the horse? I said, yes, but that's Elijah. He said, this horse was what made him run that fast. I said, okay, but how? <laughs> how? See, that's always my inquisitive question, but how? How does it work? Then he said, okay, this is how. And when he said, this is how, this horse, do you want to know the absolute truth? Okay. <laughs> This horse came, came, walked, and stood right behind me and entered inside me. It entered inside me, and I felt a bolt of jolt. It entered inside me, and I turned and looked back. The half of the body of the horse was jutting out from my back. You know, a rear, I turned along. Oh. The first part, you know, the horse head and the front legs was my body. But the horse body and its back legs was the horse. I turned, look, and he, Jeremiah taught me, this was what happened to Elijah that day. This horse entered into him, and he was able to run fast. And this is the supernatural speed 
that God will give to this last day's army. See, when you need to run fast at long distances, you know, many, many of these things that God has reserved for this last day's army, we are not taught yet. But if you look at the scriptures, it's all there. It's just that our eyes are so blinded by all this box up theology and by all these theologians interpreting everywhere as spiritual, allegory, this and that, when we have missed the real truth of it all. That's number one. Number two, the end time armies, if you read Joel 2, verses 4 to 9, they jump high up on the walls. How is it possible? They jump up high, huge walls, and they enter into the walls, and they run like horses. It's all written there. This last day's army, they will do that. How will they do that? This anointing comes upon you. And this anointing comes upon you, and you will do supernatural feats. That never before imagine. In the scriptures, there are some examples from the Old Testament to, to the New Testament to introduce you to these workings of this power. For example, Mark chapter 6 verse 48, the Lord Jesus walked on the water. You know, science tells us that the matter of the body, the density is heavier than the water. As a result, you will sink into the water. That is natural science. But here the Lord Jesus is walking on the water. Natural laws of physics suspended. You become so light like a feather. You know what happens? The wings of a dove comes upon you. Wings on your back. Wings on your legs. Wings behind your ears. And they just flutter. All starts beating. And you will just be so light like a bird. Light like a bird and you walk on the water. Nothing is there. In John chapter 10, or oh sorry, John chapter 20, verses 19 and 26, the Lord Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, though he had a solid body, walked through a closed door. How is it possible? This is solid, right? But that's what we think. Because that's what it appears to our eyes. Your mind tells you this is solid, it is solid. But if your mind tells you this is not solid, this is just nothing. Then you can walk through this, what appears to be a solid object. The natural mind tells you solid, but not the spiritual law. The spiritual law can be overruled. So when that is overruled, then you walk through a solid object. You walk through a prison and you set a believer free. You walk through any object. See, all these powers of God are not for any selfish, self-centered purposes. They are for the glory of God, for the works of God. And when you roar, a supernatural roar, a command, when you command the sun to stand, the moon to stand, and the earth to open up, how can a man's voice give that ability? Joel chapter 2, verse 11. The Lord gives voice before his army. Now look at the word. It does not say the Lord's voice spoke it. Instead the scripture says the Lord gives his voice to his army. He gives, he lends his voice to his army for his camp is very great for strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? The Lord gives his voice to his last day's army. So it's not your voice. It's the Lord's voice put in you. So because the Lord's voice is put in you, when you command, 
it's as if God himself is speaking. So because it's as if like God himself is speaking, what you say will come to pass. The Lord puts his voice in his people to command and decree judgments on nature and on the enemies of God. A good example is Numbers chapter 16 verses 1 to 35. When Moses commanded the earth to open up and swallow Dathan and company straight to hell. And in Acts chapter 13, verses 8 to 11, you read about Paul commanding a sorcerer to go blind. One word he spoke and he went blind. The other manifestation of this supernatural feat, ability is the supernatural ability to transform. Supernatural transformation that gives abilities the like which are that your entire physical body is transformed from one DNA to another DNA. Total change of your physical. Can you believe this? Now, I have a confession to make. Initially, when I was told this, I believed, but I did not dare to preach it. I said, this is too much, Lord. Nobody will believe if I say their entire body can be totally transformed into another. They will not believe, Lord. So when I preached this message in its uh, virgin form last year at a conference in India, I omitted this part. I didn't say that, you know. But when I was leading in the prayer, I saw in a vision a lion walk up towards me and he entered into me. When he entered into me, my legs from the waist downwards, I looked down, it looked like lion's legs. I said, what in the world happened to me? You know? <laughs> it literally, literally transformed like lion's legs. So, I was looking at that and praying at the same time. So I just spoke the word. Some of you well experienced, been transformed spiritually. I made it sound very spiritual, you know, <laughs> to be on the safe side. <laughs> I said you will be transformed spiritually and you will be like the Lion of Judah and all that. Okay, everything all over. And after the prayer was over, it was testimony's time. And one young boy, 23 years old, he came up to the stage to share testimony. He said, when you said that word, I suddenly felt something came upon my back. And I turned and I looked, I saw wings like eagle jutting out from my back. And I looked at my body from my waist downwards, I was like a lion. I said, what did you say? <laughs> I said, repeat one more time. When he repeated, I felt so condemned, you know. And I went back to my room and I fell on my face and I repented before God. I said, please forgive me, Lord, for my lack of faith. And God caused a thing to happen in the meeting to convince me to show me that it is possible declare it declare it so that when it happens see like when that when it happened to that boy he didn't know what was happening but he just accepted by faith young little boy so today I am bolder I'm bolder so I will tell you more than what happened that day supernatural transformation now you read in revelation chapter 4 verse 7 that when uh, john saw the living creatures one looked like a flying eagle now pause for a moment it shouldn't it have been like an eagle 
because in Ezekiel chapter 1 John, uh, Ezekiel saw the cherubim and he said it was like an eagle he did not say it was like a flying eagle Ezekiel saw it as an eagle but John saw the living creatures like a flying eagle so what's the difference between an eagle and a flying eagle so it is a creature in flight now when this creature comes inside you you will be transformed like an eagle now why an eagle what is the eagle good for speed flight will so fly at vast distances in and covering in a short time gives you the ability to fly you will be totally transformed like a bird to fly like an eagle can you believe this this is one example and Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings like eagle mount up means what you lift up right that's not figurative language you know that is real you will mount up means you will pick up and you'll fly like an eagle there you got a scripture right so you will not only have wings attached to your shoulders but you will also be transformed you know I had a first experience of this nature in 1985 I was uh, praying one night I remember at 12 midnight I was waiting on the Lord everybody in the house had gone to sleep and as I was waiting on the Lord all still and quiet within me I suddenly heard the sounds of the flapping of wings within me and I knew because that was not my first experience whenever such things happen I knew that my spirit was going to come out of my body so I became stiller and quieter when I became stilled and more quiet then after a few minutes my spirit came out of my body full body and I turn around and look at my body still in that bowed praying position and as I stood up and I felt something uneasy at the back of my shoulder you know and when I felt something uneasy and I looked an eagle like wing stretch out it was six feet in length real eagles wings this the same colors and eagles the same feathers everything the same like an eagle I saw with my own eyes the reality of Isaiah 40 31 and the wings flapped and I flew out of the house way across town into somebody's house <laughs> you know why I was brought there to see a person sinning in secret so I was a witness to see and to behold that person sinning in secret so that on the judgment day I'll be called to testify yes Lord I saw this person sitting in secret so one is flying eagle second we will transform like a dog now what is a dog good for number one sense of smell now what you know if you look at the dogs in the police and the army they train a dogs to sniff out and smell weapons bombs right likewise when you transform like that you'll be able to sniff and smell where the enemy has planted mines on the ground to destroy and kill the remnant people of God you'll be able to smell where they planted eavesdropping machines to spy out what you're talking 
to spy what you are speaking about the kingdom of God. That's one. Number two. The dogs, among many other animals, can see very easily into the spirit realm. They can always see spirits, you know. So when you are transformed like that, you will be able to see demons in people. Who are the real people? Who are the Nephilim? Or demons inside or disguised as people. You know, in these last days, have you seen a movie called the X-Men? All those mutants that you read there, they are not just science, science fiction movies, you know. They are real. Mutations, transmutations will become so common that the demons will transmute with mankind. Like what happened in Genesis chapter 6. And it will be so intermingled, you won't even know who is who. Have you seen the movie Man in the Black? Just like that. All these demons, they, they disguise like humans. Right? Nobody knows them in the real except for these two guys. Right? Will Smith and Lee Jones. <laughs> two men always in the black. Only they can figure out. The rest won't even know. So, when you take this transformation as a dog, you just walk around. The others, the enemy won't know that you, the dog is you. They will just think it's just another ordinary dog. But you will go to sense and see who are the enemies. And then you will alert the army of God. Okay, let's watch out for this person. Watch out for that person. Watch out for this person. Thirdly, a dog is a pet dog. People keep it in the houses. So they go into your house, unassuming, when an innocent dog, for what? To spy what the enemy is speaking. A good example is Elisha. See, he could detect and hear what the Syrian king make plans are against the Israeli army. So this is one ability. So initially I had a hard time trying to digest all this. Personally I could. I had no problem. Whatever the Lord tells me, I have no problem believing them. Personally. But when it comes to communicating, then I will ask the Lord, Lord, <laughs> please give me some proofs. Just like what um, our brother Neville shared uh, on the first night, that when Joshua came to him and spoke to him and he asked, Give me, show me from the Bible, where is it written? It's not for him, you know, I know him. He will believe anything that God... <laughs> Look, we have been friends for more than 20 years. We know each other. He will believe anything because... Not because we are gullible, because we walk with God. Yeah. See, when you walk with God, you know God. Yeah. You know the things of God. Yeah. Even if a demon comes masquerading like a holy saint, you can know it's an evil one. You'll, not be, you'll be able to tell the difference. But the proof is asked for your benefit, yeah. for the people's benefit. Because you will always ask question, where is it written? Show me. <laughs> right? It's for your sake, we have to go and say, please teach me, please show me. So, I was shown two biblical examples. One, Daniel chapter 4, verse 33. King Nebuchadnezzar was totally transformed from a human being into a wild bird. Total DNA transformation. It is not like what theologians say, he was mentally unsound. That's not true, because he was chased out of the palace, 
and his counselors and his ministers did not know where Nebuchadnezzar was. Total DNA transformation from a 100% human being into a 100% wild bird. He says his nails grew like eagle's claws, right? And the hairs grew on his body like a wild bird. So that when he's out in the field, all the dews will not get in his body. He needs that coating like an animal does. For seven long years, he was like that. Out in the fields. Until the day of his captivity was over. Then he was restored back to his mind. He changed back into Nebuchadnezzar and he came back to his palace. Long lost and found. <laughs> Biblical example number two or proof number two. Exodus chapter four verses three to nine. When Moses threw down his rod. Now the rod is a non-living thing. Right? And it became a snake. A living thing. So the entire molecular structure, matter, in a non-living thing was transformed into becoming a living thing. Right? There you have scriptural proof number two. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything shall be established. So therefore, this is proven beyond all shadow of doubt. That it is biblically possible. Amen. Amen. Horn number seven. The power to teletransport. That is the horn number seven. And I saw in a vision a youth. He comes and he stands in a place and he says to a group of people to come near to him. And his group of people come to him. And then he just stretched out his hand over them. And in, in an instant, they were transported into another place. Just a moment, not one person, no. An entire group of people. He just stretched his hand. And he commanded them to be transported into another location. And they were transported. If you read Luke chapter 4, verses 29 to 30. John chapter 8 verse 59 and John chapter 10 verse 39 in three instances in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says he became invisible it's like he put on a cloak over him and he became invisible to the enemies they could not kill him they tried to stone him first time they tried to stone him Second time they tried to drag him and throw him down a cliff. Third time they tried to mock him. But in all those three instances, he just walked past by them. As if they didn't exist. Or they suddenly saw him. Hey, where's he gone? Where's he gone? He just disappeared. Became invisible. You're transported. How does that work? I don't know. But they're there. It will happen. The cloak, cloak of the Holy Spirit comes upon you and just covers you like that. That's the power. You see, in the past, they have worked sovereignly by the grace of God. But in the last days, when you are anointed with this oil, you will work it at will. Not for yourself, but for in situations like that. You know, until your time comes. You see, in these three instances, the Lord escaped from his enemies. But the Bible says, when he knew his time has come to die, he just offered himself willingly. But before, his time has not come yet. So he should not die prematurely. He should not. If he had died, then his ministry is not completed. So he kept himself, protected himself, till that time came. Likewise, 
for you in these last days. God has appointed when you should die or when you should not die. Perhaps there will be some here who will never taste death. You will be alive till the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which some of the disciples of Christ are still alive till today. Can you believe that? Yes. Are you really sure? Yes. But church tradition says they all died. I don't know where in the world they get all these traditions. Even they even claim their tombs are there. But the Lord Jesus looked at some of the disciples and he said, you will not die till you see the kingdom of God coming in glory. That kingdom of God did not come on the Mount of Transfiguration. In the Mount of Transfiguration, the Lord was just transfigured. It was not the coming of the kingdom of God in glory. Which means they'll be alive. They are alive till now. Why are they alive till now? That question will be answered tomorrow. How else to make you come tomorrow? <laughs> Secondly, look at Elijah. You know, we only think that Elijah was teletransported in the chariot when he was taken alive to heaven. However, if you read 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 11 and 12, and 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 16, these two portions say Elijah was frequently teletransported from place to place frequently that was not just the one thing incident you know the one time when the chariot came is that one incident that Elisha saw but that is not the only time and it was a common knowledge to all the people in that region that Elijah frequently teletransported from place to place when he came and told Obadiah, go and tell Ahab that I have come, Obadiah tells him, sir, do you want me to die? Because when I'm gone, you will be carried somewhere else. You see, he says, the spirit will carry you somewhere else. Then where to find you? And then the sons of the prophets will tell Elisha, hey, what are you looking for? Perhaps... The spirit has taken your master and throw, put him up on the mountain. From the valley, tell it transported right on the top of several thousands high feet mountain. Tell it transportation. You read about Philip, how he was tell it transported in Acts chapter 8 verses 39 to 40. From a place in Gaza. He was teletransported 28 miles further in a city called Azutus. The distance was 28 miles. And in a fraction of a second, was transported from one place to another place. Now this is not too bad. What I'm going to share next to you is really fast stretching. <laughs> You know, one person trans teletransporting, okay, no big problem, you know. But here you read, 13 men plus a boat. <laughs> 13 men in a boat. Not just the men, even the boat, teletransported. In John chapter 6, verses 15 to 21, the Lord Jesus came walking on the water, the Bible says, as soon as his feet touched the boat, they were immediately in the shore. In an instant, they were in the shore. Whole thing teletransported. 13 men with a boat. What are the vehicles that are used for teletransportation? There are many vehicles in the spiritual realm. I know of two. One is a chariot. A chariot comes and you get into the chariot and the chariot boom, 
It's like you enter into a wormhole. Have you watched Star Trek movies? Hit into hyperspace. You know, those science fiction movies are real. Those things, those concepts are all real. You know, although there are some things that cannot be explained by science, but the basic concepts are real. You know, when Einstein discovered his theory of relativity, the Lord explained to me that Einstein's theory, E equal mc square, is correct to explain not the ability to travel behind time, but a scientific theory to explain the reality of travel in the spiritual realm. It's not possible in the natural. That part is wrong. It's absolutely not possible. But it explains the spiritual traveling, travel in the spirit. So they are real. So chariots, you, a chariot comes, you get into the chariot, and you are teletransported. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 11. And the other kind of a transportation is you ride on eagle's wings. Exodus chapter 17 verse 4. Where God tells the Israelites, I bore you on eagle's wings. Although figuratively spoken there. But it is the eagle's hands, wings will come. And you get in the wings and you are transported in an instant. You know, many times we read in the scripture, or in the spirit caught them. It is, everything is the work of the Holy Spirit, but the administrative works of it are varied. They are varied because God is a God of creativity. He, he employs different kinds of methods to cause the teletransportation to take place. Have you read a book called Transported by the Lion of Judah. Now in that book, the author had an unusual experience where the Lion of Judah, the Lord came into her as a lion and he said, sit on my back. And they go traveling. So there you have another example of being teletransported. Amen? So in conclusion, in these last days, the Bible tells us great gross darkness will cover the whole earth. This will take place on one end. Because the devil comes down with great fury against the church and against the remnant saints. While this is taking place, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 40 verse 5 and 60 verse 2, and there will be great light at the same time. That light is of two kinds. Light of the knowledge of God and light of the glories of God. It will be poured out upon the church in an indescribable manner. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the mind the exceeding greatness of of the power of God. Amen. Amen. So these are all for you. He who can believe. To him all these are available. The church was born with great pomp. And great display of glory. Likewise, the church will be raptured in great pomp and great glory. Amen. You are the child of the king. A child of the king is royal blood. How can you be a weakling? How can you be poor? How can you be miserable? Right? You are royalty. You are the prince. You know, if you watch the movie Nanya, Okay, now, I'm not promoting all these movies, you know, but all the spiritual principles in that movie. You know, the lion will look at these four children and they'll be so bowed down, feeling shameful. The lion will come up to them, Aslan, and tell them, 
Why are you bowing your head? You are a prince. You are a princess. Come on, walk like a prince. And they'll all walk. Even the little girl, the youngest girl, she'll walk like a princess. And then they'll all be crowned. That's who you are. Amen. That's who you are. In Christ Jesus, that's who you are. Amen. 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 That's who you are. My God, this is who you are. Claim your inheritance. Walk in your inheritance. Amen. 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 That's who you are. More than conquerors. Amen. More than conquerors. Bible says we are more than conquerors. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Holy Father, we thank you for your wonderful mercies for teaching us all these things, Lord. And now I thank you, Lord that your presence has been with us like a lion all throughout this session Lord thank you Lord Jesus even while your children were hearing this word you went around them and put a mark on their hearts all those whom are yours and they also felt your presence beside them. Some kind of a strange tingling sensation that came near them. And they didn't know what it was. They just thought it was the presence of God in this building. No, but you, Lord, Lion of the tribe of Judah, you came near them. And you stretch out your right leg and you scratch on their hearts your mark to set apart them who are yours. Thank you, Father. Thank you for giving them a heart to believe. Those who are here and those who are afar off, Lord. Thank you, Lord, even while they were hearing these words. You caused their spiritual eyes to be opened. You caused their spiritual ears to be opened. And you gave and you gave them the faith to believe that these impossibilities are just naturally possible to all those who live in Christ Jesus. And who walk by faith and who walk in the spirit. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. I see a mighty eagle fly into this church right now. Up on my right side, it flies in. Thank you, wonderful God. Thank you, wonderful God. Speak to them, Lord. As they spend this afternoon, oh wonderful Lord Jesus, wonderful Lord Jesus. I see now many, many pairs of angels' wings being coming down and hovering in this building right now. Thank you, Lord. Those who have faith to believe, you can receive them. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Glorious Jesus. The Holy Spirit tells me now what we have just heard, even me personally, are just 
some of the many things and there are many many more many more he who has eyes to see and ears to hear to him this eagle spirits will teach that is the prophetic voice thank you wonderful god he will come and teach you the lord jesus christ is the great eagle and even the prophets who have gone before us they are eagles eagles are always symbols of the prophets they will come to teach oh wonderful lord jesus the holy spirit counsels you enlarge your heart to believe enlarge your heart to believe cast away every unbelief he who truly believes he who truly is immersed in the word of god will not be deceived he who walks in the light and he who fellowships in the light darkness will not deceive such a person thank you wonderful god pursue love with all your heart for he who abides in love dwells with god and god with him thank you wonderful god thank you wonderful god i perceive in my spirit the holy spirit giving this counsel spend some time this afternoon since there's no soaking session but in your own homes or in your hotel where you're staying spend some time waiting on god meditating what you've just heard and the holy spirit will come beside you and open your understanding to more things thank you wonderful lord jesus and even take some of you into a trance into a journey into the spirit realm thank you wonderful god god has brought you this day to this place to do a new thing in you thank you wonderful lord jesus come and lift up your holy hands and bless the name